The name of this doll is Honeymoon. Honeymoon is the newest character in one of the world's most famous comic strips, Dick Tracy. The creator of Dick Tracy is one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Chester Gould. My name is Chester Gould. My name is Chester Gould. Only one of these gentlemen is the real Chester Gould. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by a new denture cream. The special denture toothpaste made with the cleaning power denture wears need. Denture cream. And now, here's your host, Bud Collier. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, Bud. That's what I like, spirit, spirit, all the way. <laughs> Open up that first envelope, if you will, please, and follow along on this first story. I, Chester Gould, am the creator of the comic strip Dick Tracy. I brought Tracy into the world during the height of the American gangster era of the early 30s. He has become the most famous comic strip detective of all time. I modeled Tracy after my conception of the ideal American Sherlock Holmes. In his 34 years of fighting crime, Tracy has tangled with such unforgettable characters as Flat Top, The Mole, Shaky, Prune Face, <laughs> BB Eyes, Shoulders, and of course, B.O. Plenty and Gravel Gertie. In 1947, Tracy married his long-suffering girlfriend, Tess Trueheart. Their adopted son, Junior, went out of this world to marry Moon Maid, and their daughter, Honeymoon, was born on September 12, 1965. On that date, Tracy enjoyed his proudest moment. He became a grandfather. <laughs> Signed, Chester Gould. <laughs> panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Chester Gould. Let's start the questioning with Orson Bean. Orson? Y yes, I wonder how it feels to have a granddaughter with horns. Number three, <laughs> uh, when the little girl was born, we had a newspaper strike here in New York, and this is the first picture I've seen of her, and she looks beautiful. Let me ask you, number three, whatever happened to Pat Patton? Uh, he's now chief of police. Oh, all right. Number one, uh, the mole lived, as I recall, under the ground beneath a junkyard. Through what did he enter to get into the hole that took him down to his abode? Well, it was a sort of a cabin or a, uh, a squatter's hut, let's call it that. All right. Num that no, number two, uh, uh, Sparkle Plenty is the daughter of whom? Yes. Of uh, Sparkle Plenty? Yes. It's who? the daughter of... Uh, all right, I know Sparkle Gertie. Daughter. Uh, of whom? Gravel Gertie. And, and now, originally, was B.O. Plenty a likable character when you first started drawing? No, he was, uh, he was a little on the rough side. All sort right. Of a... uh, n number three, uh... Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, uh, Dick Tracy is so handsome. Uh, I wonder if he was drawn from someone you really knew. No, it was, well, I think as the, uh, announcement said, he was a reasonable facsimile of what we consider as an American type of Sherlock Holmes, but no one in, in particular. I Not think. with that nose, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two, what did, uh, what kind of a character has uh, B.O. Plenty become? B.O. Uh, Plenty is, uh, is a home man now. He's a home man, oh, in yes. spite of his whiskers. He... <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, do you draw this uh, as well as do the story? That is correct. How do you do it? Do you do the story first and then draw the, the cartoon? That's right. Number one, why have you gone into space? Well, it seems to be a new concept. Uh, we've been on Earth with all these different conflicts of uh, uh, criminals and whatnot. We thought it might be a change of pace in keeping with the going of it. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you. Number three, who was the first crook, the first big heavy you had for your strip? Uh, a fellow by the name of Big Boy. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, number one... Who, who, do you remember the message that was flashed to him in jail by a mirror? No, I don't. 
Uh, number two, uh, I first... Back. <laughs> yeah. I first uh, remember reading about Dick Tracy in a big little book. What's a big little book? Number two. I don't know, sir. Uh, number three, who used to be the chief, if Pat Patton is now the chief? A uh, gentleman by the name of Brandon, who resigned. Uh, why did he resign, number three? He resigned because he felt he was responsible for the murder of Brilliant, the fellow that invented the two-way wrist radio. <laughs> <laughs> number one, uh, there's a comic strip that's actually fashion, a lampoon of Dick Tracy. What's the name of that? I don't recall now. It's also quite, quite a brilliant cartoonist. Peggy Cat. Thank you. Uh, number three... Has Dick Tracy ever taken off his hat? Huh. <laughs> well, I presume when he sleeps, yes. But I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Number one, how old was Junior when he got that fancy watch? Uh, he, I think we paced him at about 14, 15 years old. He was quite young. Thank you. Uh, number two, you haven't mentioned my favorite, Vitamin Flint Heart. Yes. I loved him. What happened to him? Well, he's, uh, he'll be back in the picture very shortly. But what's he doing now? I mean, I'd like to know right this minute what he's doing. <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. uh, um, let me see. Oh, yes. Uh, number three, who was Sparkle Plenty's daddy? A Bill Plenty. Thank you. Number one, can you account for the remarkable disresemblance she has to her parents? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gravel Gertie and B.O. Plenty Pew, and she's lovely. Well, if you shave B.O. Plenty's beard off and fix her... You know, they're similar in hair, though. You want their long golden hair. Yeah, so B.O. Plenty has long, then. rotten black hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have time for. Vote now, if you will, please, without consultation and without changing. Uh, vote immediately on the information you have for number one. Number two, or number three. Of course, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Are all your ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I thought he just had too much information. I thought uh, that that first crook's name had Mike in it someplace, but I think Big Boy was right. It's a long time ago. Peggy Cat. I almost voted for number one because he looks like Dick Tracy. <laughs> but, but number three spoke so warmly that I know it's his family that we're talking about tonight. Arson. Number one said that the mole went through a shack. I believe it was an old car that he went through. Uh, I, I meant to ask about Red Rum, whose name spelled backwards as murder. I think he was, I think, the first, but I still voted for number three. They were all good. Well, that makes three for three. What about you, Kitty? I voted for number three because Orson is an expert on, to on comic strips, and number one couldn't remember something, and I think you'd remember it even though it was a long time back, although he does like, look like Dick Tracy. So I voted well, for that three. makes it unanimous. So the votes all in and the minds made up. We'll find out now which one of these three gentlemen, in truth, is Chester Gould. Will the real Chester Gould please stand up? Thank you, Chester, and long may he wave. That's <laughs> been a Thank wonderful you. call. Uh, number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Lewis Smith, and I'm a lighting consultant. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Bob Godfrey, and I'm a songwriter. You might be interested to know that one of the persons who regularly sings Bob Godfrey's songs is his brother, Arthur Godfrey. Ah. <laughs> Checking the score, we find there were no incorrect votes, but in that case, there still is $150 coming your way, and we hope the laughs and the good time you have make up for anything else. We certainly thoroughly enjoyed having you here. Good night, and God bless you. Our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Mary Lester. My name is Mary Lester. My name is Mary Lester. Follow along again with this, if you will, panel. I, Mary Lester, am tour director and official hostess at a large California winery. I live right on the vineyard and have at my disposal a private airplane, a 140-foot schooner, 
a butler, and a French chef to help entertain visitors of importance. In the four years I have been acting as hostess for the vineyard, I have read over 200 books on wine, interviewed some 500 wine experts, and personally given tours to over 25,000 wine lovers. Since an important part of my job is demonstrating the excellence of California wines, it's a slow day for me if I don't consume at least one bottle of champagne. Signed, Mary Lester. <laughs> well, panel, these ladies all claim to be Mary Lester. Only one can be, of course, would start the cross-examination with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Uh, number three, what kind of a, what color of wine is dry semillon? White. Thank you. Uh, number two, what's the biggest city, California city, near the Napa Valley? Um, well, um... Uh, the Napa Valley is just north of San Francisco. Thank you. Um, number three, what does the name Moe Chandon mean to you? It's a very fine champagne work. Thank you. And number one, what does Pinot Noir mean to you? It n means a uh, red grape. Thank you. Now, number three, is champagne a mixture of different years, or does it all come out in one, uh, or is it a one year? Well, it can be a mixture of different years, or it can be one year. It just depends on the company. You keep. Arson B. Yeah, this is a great job for a wino. Number three, you, uh, you drink a quart of champagne a day and get paid for it. Uh, do you, uh, how many of us do you see right now? I, mean, uh, I haven't had my quota, as I'm told that you must add stain while going on the show. Ah, all right. <laughs> Very good. Number one, uh, you got any samples? I mean, do, do you carry samples around with you? Do you give out any? Not on me at the no, moment. No, all right. I didn't think that. Uh, tell me this, number one. Uh, why... Why on the top of a bottle of most American wines is there a screw cap instead of a cork? Uh, that isn't true of most American it wines. It's just some. the kind of cheap stuff I drink, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, why is most American wine non-vintage? This is true, isn't it? Yes, that the, is why, true. Why, uh, now, uh, the vintage is the most important thing in Europe. Why? Uh, in Europe, the climate varies quite a bit, whereas in uh, California, where our finest wines are grown, the... Um, Climate uh, is quite now, number th oh, I had a great question for <laughs> you. Number, number, number one, why do you have a schooner, a 140-foot schooner, if you're showing people around the winery all the time? You take them out there and drink champagne? Exactly. What fun. <laughs> uh, number two, why is it that uh, in, in the Burgundy country in France, let's say, uh, a, a vineyard that is only maybe 100 yards, one from the other, varies completely in its uh, excellence? Well, the graftings uh, would probably be different. The cutting uh, of the It has nothing to do with the climate, then. No, no. no. It's Number three, I've been given a lot of grapes recently because it's the time now, and I'd like to make some wine for myself. Uh, how long do I let it ferment in the crock? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you do. You put all the grapes in a crock, right? Oh, let me get and I'm going to stamp them out later on with my own bare feet. But You're going to make that? that? <laughs> You're going to make bathtub wine? Yeah, in, in a, a crock. crock. In a in crock. A crock. A crock. How long do you let it ferment? It depends on the individual grape. It also depends on your feet. Tom <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm> Tom. <laughs> Number one, what, is, what does it mean when it says English cuvee on a bottle of champagne? It means the, the particular blend in the bottle. In other words, it, it would be a vintage of a certain year, and it was blended to make that particular wine. Well, why English? Number two, why would it, you say English, for instance? Uh, it's the type of grape, grape used in the blend. I see. Number three, I've heard recently when, uh, the, that Beaujolais has a particularly good time after it's bottled. What would you say the length of time after the bottle would be? I really am not familiar with this, as we don't make a Beaujolais. Oh, oh, I see. That's it. Time for you now to mark your ballot. So mark them at once, if you will, please. For the one you think is the real one. Without consultation, just mark your ballot for number one, number two, or number three. Everyone finished? Very well, Tom. For whom did you vote? I voted for number one, uh, and I can't wait to see how Kitty's uh, wine comes out. <laughs> Peggy, which one do you think it is? What? I voted for number one, because the Pinot Noir is it's kind of a dark red grape, and, and 
And the thing is, if they're only 100 yards apart, it's usually the soil and the sun, one be on one side of a slope and the other on the other side of the slope, which makes it good or bad. Horses. Oh. <laughs> Was, uh, number one is good, but she looked rather aghast to hear about Kitty's croc. So I think that uh, I voted for number two because she used the word graftings, and that's a great word. So if she's a liar, she deserves to win for using that word. Isn't it? <laughs> Kitty. Well, I voted for number one. I like number two's answer for your question about why California wines have no vintage mm. because the climate is so equable. But I thought that it was number one who's had all that glorious champagne. She looks simply marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, that's the way it stacks up with the minds made up as solidly as they are and the votes all in. Let's find out now which of these three ladies, in truth, is Mary Lester. Will the real Mary Lester please stand up? <laughs> Oh, my. Wow. Incidentally, Mary Lester is the tour director and official hostess at the Almaden Vineyards at Los Gatos, California, right? Yes. Very pleased to have you here tonight. You only see four of them, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very, uh, very palatable stuff. Uh, I've had a few fingers of it in my day. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Judith Small, and I have a gallery in New York for primitive art. Oh. Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Joan Elbaum and I'm a lawyer here in New York City. The court checks out very happily for you because you have done what we refer to always as skunked the panel. <laughs> Fooled them all the way and that means four times $250 for a total of $1,000, ladies. Start your shopping early and may it bring you great joy. Thanks for being with us. Good night and God bless you. Let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Tony Sawyer. My name is Tony Sawyer. My name is Tony Sawyer. Follow along again, panel. I, Tony Sawyer, am a captain in Great Britain's Royal Marines. The Marines were organized in 1664 and have taken part in every major British naval battle in the past 300 years. I am also the leader of the Marines' commando motorcycle team. Fifteen of us perform all sorts of cycling stunts, such as riding through hoops, leaping a motorcycle through the air over 13 men, and performing precision acrobatics. The hit of our presentation is a mock battle between the motorcycle commandos and the fantastic 007 car, it was driven by James Bond in the motion picture Goldfinger. As an exit stunt, we form a human pyramid of 14 men supported by five bikes and a ladder. Signed, Tony Sawyer. Gentlemen, all claiming to be Tony Sawyer, we bring you now, panel. We'll start with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you. That was a very exciting film. Uh, number three, who are there women in the in the um, Brit Britain's Royal Marines? No, there are not. Oh, number two, what are waifs? Or wrens? What are wrens? Uh, wrens are the uh, women in Britain's Navy. Ah, you have no women in... You, you agree? Um, um, well... <laughs> well, to join, are you? <laughs> Uh, number one, where are you doing this, these stunts now? In Madison Square Garden. Oh, thank you. I would have to see that. Number three, how do you train for this? Uh, we started training on May the 1st this year. Well, how do you do it? Practice, pure and simple. Oh, so we're, we're all experienced motorcyclists. Number two, who organized this? Uh, this Tom Poston organized this. Oh, I did. <laughs> thank you, Bud. Number three, how, how do you make the fastest possible 180 degree turn on a, on a sickle? Slowly. <laughs> well, how would it be accomplished physically, I mean? There's one way that I know of that you make a 180 degree turn almost on the instant. Yes, you can either skid the motor bicycle or you can 
do it very, very, and I'm serious, very slowly, keeping the machine absolutely upright. I see. Number two, thank you. Number two. Thank you, Cat. That's right. <laughs> Number two, where is the British Naval College? I don't think there is such a thing. Number three, do you agree with that? Uh, you're referring, I think, to the Royal Naval Academy, which is in Dartmouth. Thank you. Number one, what are those things on your shoulders called? I take it you're referring to the insignia. Yes. They're known as uh, stars. Oh. <laughs> Number three, what kind of a car do you battle in the garden? An Aston Martin. Thank you. Um, number two, if you were started in 1664, did you take place in the... Uh, did you have a part of the Battle of Trafalgar? Not me personally. Well, no, no. Ah! <laughs> Orson <laughs> B. Number one, uh, you, you said, ah. Kitty, there, there are no... Oh, one of you said there are no girls in the Marines, right? That's correct. Therefore, there are no girls in the show that you put on? That's not correct. What do they do? You are, you have, what do you have? Girls? Highland dancing. Highland dancing. Number two, uh, a single musician, I understand, does something in your show all alone. What does he do? Oh, there, there are a number of soloists. Like, name one. I mean, I don't mean the name. What does he do? Uh, well, let me say a single trumpeter. What does he play? Um, I don't know that there is a single trumpeter. Oh, they're, they're all married. <laughs> That's all the time we have. <laughs> Time for you now to mark your ballot, so mark away immediately, without change, without any consultation. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots are almost marked. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number two, really, uh, sometimes on the basis of the fact that he wasn't able to answer the question because it wasn't phrased to his satisfaction or something. But as I recall, we used to have to practice uh, making turns by putting the foot pedal down on the ground and spinning the machine, actually on spinning the machine on that foot rest mm -hmm. and then snap, snapping it upright again and going back the other way. So I don't know. Peggy. Like well, their West Point in Annapolis is uh, Sandhurst and Dartmouth. And number three knew about Dartmouth, so, so I voted for him. Orson B. They're all swell. They should have their own show, the Rover Boys or something. <laughs> I voted uh, for number three because I liked it when he said, uh, when somebody asked him, how do you do it? He said, practice pure and simple. And that sounded good to me. Kitty Carlisle. Well, I voted for number one. He looks terribly serious, and I think this is very serious business. Unfortunately, he called those things stars on his shoulder, and I thought they were called pips, but In maybe that's for the army. Well, there you have it. Widely split this time. Farthest apart you've been tonight. So let's find out now which one of these three gentlemen, in truth, is Tony Sawyer. Will the real Tony Sawyer please stand up? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes? But isn't your Annapolis Dartmouth number two? Yes, but the question wasn't correct, madam. Well, if you're gonna come... <laughs> I said, what, where is the Naval College? You're gonna come over here to correct my English. <laughs> Don't be a sore head, madam. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Derek Robinson, and I write advertising copy for the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name, sir, and what do you do? My name is Charles Cousins, and I sell instant coffee. <laughs> Incidentally, as was brought out in the questioning, Captain Sawyer and his commando of a motorcycle team are appearing in Madison Square Garden as part of a military spectacle called the Royal Marines Tattoo. I hear it's sensational, too. Ah, uh, it was good fun, gentlemen, believe me, and you came very close to skunking the battle again. There were one, two, three incorrect votes at three times $250 for a total of $750. Thank you very much for being with us and hope you enjoyed it, too. Goodbye and God bless you. all the time we have for tonight. You make it go fast, panel. Good night to you. Good night, Brian. We'll see you all Good next week at the same time. And don't forget, I'll be with you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. In the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodman, Bill Cotman production.
to tell the truth has been brought to you by Supple Stockings, the beautifully sheer stockings that look as good as they feel. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for To Tell the Truth. The program was pre-recorded.